Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dolan, and I'm the International Student Recruitment Manager at uh, King's College London for India and South Asia. Uh, welcome to this very special session today on importance of studying healthcare technologies after the COVID-19 by King's College London. We have Professor Kaval Rode, uh, who will be speaking on this topic. Uh, Professor Rode is uh, the head of uh, education for the School of Biomedical Engineering and Imaging Sciences at uh, King's College London. Uh, he has more than 400 publications in journals, conference proceedings, book chapters, and patents. Uh, his current research interests include uh, image-guided interventions, intelligent mechatronics systems for uh, interventions and ultrasound imaging, 3D printing in healthcare and pedagogy for biomedical engineering. Over to you, Kaval. Great, thank you so much, Dolan, for that lovely introduction and welcome to all of our, our um, uh, student uh, attendees. Uh, so I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about uh, biomedical engineering and how you can get into this really exciting uh, subject area. Um, so as Dolan has said, uh, I myself am a biomedical engineer and um, I work at uh, King's College uh, London, which is based right in the center of London. And I'm actually based at a very large teaching hospital, which is St. Thomas's Hospital, uh, which is right opposite the Houses of Parliament. And what do I do? Well, I build technology really that's focused at improving the lives and particularly the health of my um, fellow human beings. So what is biomedical engineering? So biomedical engineering is engineering. So it's a type of engineering and it uses all the classical techniques of en engineering, but its target is to provide solutions for healthcare uh, problems. And so biomedical engineers do what other engineers do. They design things, they build things, they test things, but really importantly, they deploy them and test them in the healthcare environment and deal with healthcare uh, problems. So these two things are examples of technologies that have been built by biomedical engineers. So on the left here, we have a simple syringe. And on the right, we have a very large x-ray system, which is used to do keyhole heart surgery. So one thing is very tiny, it fits in the palm of your hand, and the other thing takes up a huge room and um, has a very high level of complexity, whereas this is very simple. But actually, I don't have to um, tell you that it, uh, because of what we're currently uh, going through in terms of the global pandemic, in terms of impact, of course, the syringe has a huge impact on society. society. So the syringes are being used right now to deliver uh, vaccines all across the world. And of course, that's really, really helping uh, society, protect, protecting them against COVID-19. Um, but of course, the x-ray system as, as well is having a, a huge impact. It's uh, helping uh, patients who have heart disease uh, and uh, allowing them to live more normal lives. And that's the underlying theme. This is this biomedical engineering is a is an engineering that actually has huge societal impact. Now, depending on where you look online or what you read, you might find uh, you may find the term biomedical engineering, but you can find other terms such as bioengineering, medical engineering, healthcare engineering. These are all the same thing. It's exactly what I've just described. So, why do we need biomedical engineers? Uh, well we need to provide more effective and more efficient uh, healthcare all over the world. And this is a real priority in any uh, society. And some of the uh, problems where we, we're facing uh, globally are things like the aging population, because actually um, people are actually living better and they're actually living longer. The fraction of society that's over a certain age threshold, for example, the fraction of people that are over 80 years uh, of age is increasing over time. And of course, our bodies are biological systems and as they age, they break down and the burden of disease is therefore increasing. At the moment, of course, we have the global pandemic that we're facing and that's obviously an immediate uh, healthcare problem, but things like aging population and other types of disease, infectious disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, um, um, uh, degenerative um, um, nervous uh, diseases like Alzheimer's and, 
and so forth. These are all things that are affecting, uh, affecting every society uh, across the globe. And really, biomedical engineering has a pivotal role to address uh, these needs. And so what we really want as biomedical engineers is ideally we want to prevent disease, but that is quite a difficult uh, thing to do. So typically we want to detect disease earlier. We want to provide better treatments. We want better outcomes uh, for our patients that are going to improve their well-being. And we want to do all of this in an economical way, because as the burden of disease is increasing, our financial resources to handle that are not increasing in proportion. So the per capita um, healthcare expenditure is either very much sort of fixed or maybe declining over time. So this type of engineering really is has huge uh, societal and economic impact, uh, no matter where you are in the world. So it's a very rewarding type of engineering to be involved in. Now, how do you get into biomedical engineering? So if you are um, currently uh, in school and going on to higher education, then of course you would think about doing an undergraduate uh, degree in biomedical engineering. So uh, at King's, we offer a three-year program, which leads to a Bachelor of Engineering and a master's program, which leads to a, a master or MEng of uh, engineering. Um, if you already have a degree or are about to graduate, then you might think that I'm gonna take the the knowledge, the understanding, the skills, all the things I learned in my undergraduate program and maybe apply them to the healthcare uh, sector. In that case, you might want to do a master's um, in biomedical engineering. At King's, we, we call our master's of biomedical engineering master's in healthcare technology. So that's the course uh, that we're offering. So this is the typical route of, of your um, entry or your sort of getting into this uh, field. Now, what are, in, in, in terms of biomedical engineering, what are the sort of things that you need to know or what are the things that you're going to learn uh, in terms of knowledge, understanding, skills, and so forth? What are the areas? Well, maths and physics are two important uh, areas. So uh, you need to be a, enjoying your maths, you need to be enjoying your physics, and be willing to expand this uh, in, in your time at university. And then biomedical engineering also encompasses all other types of engineering. So mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronic engineering, chemical engineering, fluid engineering, software engineering, design engineering. And of course, because it's biomedical engineering, it's gonna include the biology, the medicine uh, and so forth. And in fact, it is the most comprehensive type of engineering course that you could possibly do. Because as you can see from this slide, we have got everything on these courses. Really, you're gonna learn a lot of um, different types of uh, knowledge and acquire a lot of different types of skills. So it's really giving you a very broad based um, education and yet it's applied to the healthcare uh, domain. So um, let's go through things uh, that we're gonna, we're gonna be uh, teaching and learning and skills that we're gonna be acquiring. So maths and physics, I've already mentioned, is quite a core uh, area and all of the modules that we are teaching involve some degree of knowledge of maths and physics and development of new ideas and concepts. So let's look at mechanical engineering, how it applies to uh, the healthcare uh, sector. So one of the big areas is uh, robotics. So healthcare robotics is a boom area at the moment. And um, there are uh, companies, new companies coming every day with robotic solutions uh, to um, uh, for um, helping in the healthcare domain. So I put two examples on this slide. So here is a surgical uh, robot, the Da Vinci system from uh, Intuitive, and that's used to performing keyhole uh, surgery, for example, um, operations uh, in urology and gynecology uh, and so forth. So this is an absolutely amazing example of, a, of mechanical engineering and a robotic system. Here at the bottom, I've got another robotic system, uh, the Magellan system from Hansen, which is a robotic system for doing keyhole uh, surgery on uh, blood vessels, so keyhole vascular surgery. What about electrical engineering? A good example of electrical engineering in the healthcare domain is the MRI scanner. So an MRI scanner, obviously when you look at it in a hospital, it looks beautiful, it has all the uh, covers on, but if you take the covers off and you look inside, what you see here is what we, what we can see in the top right. You see uh, coils, you see magnets, you see electromagnets and so forth. So actually MRI is, is amazing because it's a, it's a combination of uh, a very powerful superconducting magnet. 
It's, um, it's uh, RF coils that can transmit and receive radio frequency and electromagnets that can generate um, uh, spatially varying uh, magnetic fields. And that's electrical engineering. And the amazing thing is that those co that combination of things allows you to actually take pictures of the intact living human body. Electronic engineering is uh, everywhere in healthcare. I put two examples on this slide. So one here is a pacemaker. The pacemaker is used in patients whose uh, electrical rhythm of their heart has gone uh, um, uh, awry and that needs to be put right. So we implant this inside the body and these pacemaker wires are then put inside the heart. And this device, an example of a microelectronics device will provide that regular electrical signal to allow a patient's heart to beat normally. Another great example of small scale electronic engineering is the portable blood pressure machine. So this is a wrist blood pressure monitor. You strap it onto your wrist. It's totally wireless. It connects to your tablet or your any mobile device, your phone. You press, you run the app there, you press the button go. It'll then go through the uh, inflation deflation cycle, measure your blood pressure, record your pulse rate. And then really importantly, it'll just send it to your, uh, your physician. So the physician can have that information sitting in the comfort of his or her surgery, and you can be sitting in the comfort of your home doing regular measurements. And of course, you can have behind this a software system, such as an AI system, which is keeping an eye on all of these measurements and seeing, are they going outside of the normal zone uh, for you in particular? Chemical engineering is really important. Obviously, it, it links into biology because uh, we, we uh, you know, chemistry is a fundamental of, uh, of, of uh, cellular uh, biology. But, but also we use things like radio tracers, so radioactive um, isotopes that we put in, uh, we put them together with biological molecules, which are gonna introduce into the human body and use those, for example, to detect cancer. So that's one of the normal ways in which we look at cancer and look at the spread of cancer and look at the response of, of, of treatments uh, as well. So we put the radio tracer in, we detect the radioactive particles uh, that come out of the body and we use those to locate regions of cancer in the body. So this is a, a, what we call a nuclear medicine scan. Fluid engineering, of course, in our body, we have blood and the blood is flowing in very elaborate and complex ways. We can measure the way in which that blood flows. For example, at the top here, we see streamlines of blood flowing through a patient's heart. This patient had an abnormal heart, was born with this abnormal heart because the patient had congenital heart disease. And we used MR imaging to study the flow of the blood through this patient's heart. So we could actually plan what we're gonna do in terms of intervention, how we're gonna treat this patient. Are we gonna do some keyhole surgery? Are we gonna do an open surgery uh, and, and so forth to try to restore uh, a normal blood flow to the patient. In patients that have, for example, heart failure, their, their ventricles are no longer able to pump at the required metabolic, uh, you know, to meet the metabolic demand of the body. We can actually implant into the ventricle an artificial turbine pump and using uh, fluid uh, dynamics, we can simulate the behavior of that pump prior to putting it in. So at the bottom here, uh, this animation which, rang, uh, which ran when I first put this slide on is a simulation of this uh, turbine pump. And we can use that simulation to adjust the parameters um, and all, all of the different aspects of this device prior to actually implanting it into a patient. So really making that whole thing really fine tuned uh, uh, for a particular patient. In other words, this is what we call precision uh, medicine. Software is really important. I mean, we've already seen some examples of that, but one area in which software is important is in simulation. So simulations are, is, are a great way in which to educate people in healthcare, but also they allow us to, uh, for example, uh, to tailor treatments to particular patients. Again, going back to this concept of precision uh, medicine, we can um, put make simulators like the one that's shown in this um, movie, uh, for example, to allow doctors to train how to do uh, surgical procedures. For example, this is a, a surgical procedure which is uh, closing a defect in the uh, in in the septum between chambers uh, of the heart. So the doctors can practice the procedure and they can do it in a patient specific way because we can build a simulator with images taken from a patient who's actually coming in for a surgery. So we can actually practice the surgery that we're about to deliver on a particular patient. And these types of simulators also now involve haptics, uh, which allow the operators to have a, a sense of feel and touch. 
uh, and, and, and shortly what, what you'll see is the operator using haptic joysticks uh, to control uh, the simulator. So haptics and simulators, this are, these are great, again, um, boom areas in, in healthcare uh, technology. And of course, design is very important. So when we're designing hardware, we're designing software, we're designing complete end-to-end -end systems, um, we need to have a formal knowledge, training, understanding of how that design process works. And so in, on our courses, we go from teaching you uh, in collaboration with our artist colleagues how to draw uh, by a freehand and all the way to doing more traditional type of things like uh, in engineering, such as computer aided design. And of course, because it's healthcare engineering or biomedical engineering, it involves the human body. So we're gonna be learning about the human body, about anatomy and physiology and pathology and all of those things on our courses uh, as well. So that is what biomedical engineering is. And actually, if you enjoy science all um, across the board, so biology, physics, maths, um, and chemistry, then this is a great uh, a subject to take at an undergraduate or a postgraduate uh, level because it's really cross-cutting. Now, why would you like to do this at King's and join me and my colleagues? Well, King's is one of the best places in the world uh, to study this particular subject and to work with us uh, alongside us doing our research work that we conduct in this particular area. So um, King's is obviously one of the highest ranked universities in the world. And in particular for our biomedical engineering uh, group at King's, we are the largest biomedical engineering group in the whole of Europe. Uh, we've won a number of very prestigious prizes, including recently in 2019, the Queen's Anniversary Prize, which is given uh, for excellence in higher education and research. Um, our facilities are outstanding, uh, and, and I'll show you the campuses in a minute. And our students who come onto our courses do very well in terms of careers. So uh, the graduate employment rate is exceptionally high. Um, so we are, we are excellent in research and we're excellent in education. And really that's reflected by the excellent score that we get from our students. So our undergraduate students complete a survey every year uh, the National Student Survey, and we got 89%, which puts us really uh, in, in um, that's a really good level uh, for a Russell Group University for this particular uh, subject. Now, some of the more recent things that only came out in the last few weeks is some of the new rankings. Uh, so uh, on the left here, we see the, uh, the Shanghai rankings, and uh, I've distilled these rankings down for the subject of medical technology. And here's the, here's the list of the world ranking of medical technology. So Harvard, Stanford, John Hopkins, and we are kings number four in the world for medical technology. And in fact, that's number four in the world, and that puts us as number one in the whole of Europe for medical technology. Also uh, recently released rankings by the Complete University Guide uh, for undergraduate subjects. If you look at um, biomedical engineering, then we are ranked number three in the UK. So number one, we have Imperial, number two, University of Strathclyde, which, which, who, uh, who have a great reputation for biomedical engineering. And there we are, number three, uh, King's College. So we're one of the best courses that you could possibly do in biomedical engineering, uh, certainly in the UK, if not the world. And in terms of our group, we are exceptionally ranked uh, number one for medical technology in Europe. So you get a chance if you join us to be part of that uh, success. Our campuses are wonderful. We're right in the middle of London. So here's, this is Big Ben, Houses of Parliament. This is where my office is, uh, St. Thomas's Hospital. So we have three affiliated hospitals, which are teaching campuses. So St. Thomas's, Guy's Hospital, which is next to the Shard, which is a very tall building uh, in the center of London, and also King's College Hospital, all three hospitals being world-renowned hospitals. And then we have our main um, other campuses, which is the Waterloo Campus, about 10 minutes walk from here and about a five to 10 minutes walk across one of London's bridges, Waterloo Bridge is the Strand Campus. And so you get taught at all of these lovely, beautiful campuses in an absolutely beautiful part of London. So as I said, if you're gonna do the undergraduate courses, three years or four years, and it is an accredited program, it is fully accredited with the Institute of Engineering and Technology. And actually, when we had our recent visit from the IET in 2020, they were very, uh, very um, um, congratulate, you know, congratulating us on, on the success, not only of our course, but also of our environment for educating our students. 
the healthcare technologies program, which is our master's program, is a one year program. And what are the requirements for entering into these programs? Well, I've listed these requirements right at the top. So you need to be good in science, you need to be good in mathematics, and you need to be really motivated. It's got to be something that you want to do. You want to apply what you've got already to the healthcare area, develop it, and gain skills, and, and uh, join our, our lovely uh, team of very highly skilled and uh, renowned uh, researchers in, in, you know, as part of their uh, research teams and research programs. Now, on the, under, on the undergraduate programs, um, the requirements are AAB for the BEng and AAA for the MEng uh, for A-level subjects. And of course, if you've got uh, qualifications which are different, uh, diff or you can work, you can actually contact our admissions team and find out what the equivalent qualifications would be. If you want to go into our master's program, you need an equivalent of an upper second class degree, so a 2-1 or better uh, to get a uh, to secure a place for our master's programs. So typically we have 120 places available for undergraduate and 100 places available for our postgraduate course. Now our courses are unique in that they are taught uh, partly in the hospital environment, which is actually completely unique in the UK. We are the only biomedical engineering group that are teaching the courses uh, on site in a hospital. And of course, that's important because some of you were doing these courses, that will be the environment that you end up working in. The facilities are outstanding. We've got all the facilities of the hospitals. And of course, we've got the facilities of the university. And because we're such a large group, we have huge research facilities. And all of my colleagues are renowned in their respective fields throughout the world. Now, one of the real uh, pluses about doing your courses with us is that you get to join our research teams and actually take part in ongoing research projects. So all of our research projects are, uh, are just the ongoing research which is occurring in the uh, School of Biomedical Engineering and you just join the team. So it's, it's, it's partly like doing a, a, a an ex work experience uh, placement rather than doing an undergraduate or a master's uh, a pro um, project. And really that uh, architecture works really well and we find many of our students are going to be publishing or being co-authors uh, in, in publications with us as, as a result of the way that they get integrated. We have numerous numerous industrial partners and, and what's really unique is that uh, some large companies have on-site teams at King's working alongside us. So Siemens and Philips, they have large teams of employees actually based at St. Thomas's Hospital doing joint research with us. We're also NVIDIA's a partner of excellence in Europe. And we have a brand new building being built at uh, St. Thomas's, which is going to be a startup hub uh, for companies. And it's going to be housing 40 companies. So work has started on that building and it's going to be completed in the next years. And that's going to be amazing to have the medtech startups as part of the educational program and as part of the hospital, right located all together in one space. Again, that's going to be very unique. Now, in terms of careers, biomedical engineering is a great subject to get into. There is booming career opportunities all around the world. Uh, and in fact, there's been a, a, you know, a positive delta because of COVID, where some uh, careers have taken a downturn. This is an area which has taken a, an upturn because the need for the technology to address the global pandemic. So biomedical engineering is really booming. So it's a great time to get into this. And after graduation, what do our um, undergraduate uh, students and postgraduate students, what do they do? Well, here's a, a word um, map showing some of the words from their job titles. And as, you, as you'll see, there's no one particular thing. There's all sorts of stuff. And that is because these programs are quite broad based and you can get into a lot of different types of technology uh, sectors. So they don't have to be healthcare. They could be other types of technology sectors because the things you learn, of course, can apply across uh, disciplines. So thank you for joining me for this uh, for this talk. And um, I put my email address up on this slide and you're welcome to contact me if you have any questions. Also, I'm on Unibuddy, uh, which is a, a system which you can sign up to and you can uh, post questions on that directly to me. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna, if you want to, if you want to um, get in touch, please go ahead and and do that. And it's been lovely to give this uh, brief presentation today. Thank you so much.